All right. So, <coughs> when last we saw, we're at phase one, phase one diffuse, and we figured figured that out. So we got the we passed phase one. Yeah, phase one diffuse have both an x one, and that's where we were. So. Phase one diffused, how about the next one? Phase one diffused, how about the next one? So that's where it's being printed out. See the input validator or, and then this call here. So it looks like what's happening is for each of these phases, there's input validator and then the actual testing of the phase and then some other function is being called, but that's being called every time, so it's not phase specific. So I will assume this is phase two, and then jump into that. Um, so here's something that I didn't go over but that might need some refreshing. What is this part here that Ida puts in the beginning of the function, and then this part here, these first few instructions? Let's start with this one. What are these first few instructions? What are, what are those doing? Yeah, this is initialization, setting up local variables. And setting up space on the stack for local variables, um, setting up your stack frame. So moving the the EBP, uh, pushing EBP, saving EBP on the stack, move ESP to EBP. So now your EBP is the the uh, pointing to the beginning of the frame, the stack frame for this function, and then the sub ESP one ch sets up space for your local variables, and that's the var underscore number. That's, that's, those are your local variables. And then the R0 is going to be um, the, uh, that uh, parameter that comes in, the argument to this function, which Ida thinks is a car star. So I like calls, we see the boom, okay, do another stuff. Let's dive into this first function here. All right, so who can tell me what this is doing? What is What does scanf do? It's reading in your input. What was that? It's reading in your input from the command line. This is scanf reads in input for S scanf reads in input from the command line. S scanf. The parsing of it sure twenty six digits. Put the value in. String of each of the variables with two digits. Hold on, we got Jared typing online. Yeah, so S scanf parses a string. Uh, regular scanf will read a um, from standard in. So I got that right. Uh, read from standard in, and it will uh, take a format string and basically parse standard in into um, the variables that, that follow that format string. With S scanf, it basically does that, but instead of on standard in, it does it to a input string. So, as Jared says, in this case, it is percent %d, percent %d, percent %d, percent %d, percent %d. Which we see here. So, what this is doing is it's taking a its first argument. Let's take a look at the arguments. Highlight the push. 
You can see first argument, second, third, fourth, fifth, so on. So F scan F, the first one is what Ida is saying is a car star, and that is that is the first argument scan F. Should say if you are not familiar with how scan F works, go to the all-knowing Google F scan F. C++ reference, and here you go. And it says this is this is how that library call works. It takes a constant car star S, constant car star format, and then a variable number of other arguments. And what this is saying is it takes that that first argument as the input string, the second argument as this is the format that the input string should follow, and then takes the uh, that format and parses it into and writes it those values into the uh, the following arguments. So what this is doing? What is percent D? What was it? Yeah. What's specifically? What's the uh, data type? Yeah. Yeah. An integer. So this is going to read one, two, three, four, five, six integers from that first argument, which is arg zero, which is that first argument to this function. And it's going to write those six integers to the first argument, second argument, to the third, fourth, fifth, Sixth, seventh, eighth argument. See, so there, there are these six: one, two, three, four, five, six arguments here. And what those are? This is the here and here and here. This is the array access syntax that I showed in the beginning of this lab, of this phase, where it takes the, assuming R4 is an array, it takes uh, basically that pointer, increments the pointer by 14 hex or 20 bytes, and stores that resultant point pointer in EX and pushes it onto the stack. Same here, so that's going to be 16, 12, 8, 4. These are your number of bytes in an integer. There are four bytes in an integer, so that's why this is incrementing, or if you're reading it down this way, decrementing by 4. Um, that's, that's your array access. This is the, the 4 times your um, index into the array. Anybody remember that? I showed ooh, showed on here that array access. It's like that and that this is that count times increment. Count is the number of bytes in the data type. So what we get by the time that we get down here after the scanf is we get those, assuming that we got a line that contained an integer space, another integer of space, six integers separated by spaces, then we will have each of those integer, each of those values that was typed in stored as a integer in the ARG4 array. Let's just call that int array. Uh -huh. All right. Um, what what S scan F returns? If I can find that, there it is. Return value on success function returns the number of items in the argument list successfully filled. So the next thing that it's checking is did I get? There we go. You X into a variable, compare it with six. Did I actually get six numbers? 
Um, and if that is not so, boom. If it is so, it just jumps around it. So this is the part that actually gets get six numbers. So I just so I figured that this that's all that this is doing. It's getting six numbers or booming. If it doesn't get six numbers. So that's the first part of this phase. So uh, this is a nice thing that Ida does. It says, OK, I've identified you have these two arguments. I named one of the arguments int underscore array. So it said, OK, where this is being called, I'm going to put in a little helpful comment here that the second thing pushed, well, going backwards, the second thing pushed is int underscore array. And I even went so far as to say, oh, well, that is just being loaded here. So I'm going to name that local variable in this function into underscore array. So I is actually really helpful if you name your local variables uh, and your, uh, your arguments to function. So, what's this first thing that it's doing here? Checking if the first number is one. Yep, it's checking if the first number is one. And if it is not one, what does it do? Boom. So, what does that mean? That means our first number has to be. Yay. We have our first number. Okay, so move down here. So then we move one into bar four, jump down to here, and we have this loop because we see this bolded line here where there's a initialization, a compare, where it jumps out of the loop. Does this look familiar? So there's our for loop with the initialization value and the comparison, the test. So what's it doing? Well, let's see. What is this doing? Somebody else tell me. Somebody tell me what this is doing here. Sean? Yeah, where you are. Um, right in here. So that's where it's doing the, the uh, multiplication. Yeah. They're just they're checking that equals a certain thing. If it doesn't, then it explodes. If it does, it goes on to the next number. Yeah. Yep, it's doing multiplication. So it's grabbing uh, var 4, adding 1. Var 4 is, let's name this our um, We'll just call it, let's just call it I. The, the standard uh, for loop value, I. So add one to I. Uh, move is interesting. So it adds one, it doesn't actually add one to I, it says, okay, move the current value of i to ex and add one to the value and then move again grab grab the value of i again into ecx and we're going to use it as this offset here var 20 so what is var 20 well first off what is what is this syntax this EBP plus ECX times 4 plus R20. We see the same kind of syntax down here EBP plus EDX times 4 plus int array. Yeah, it's an array access. Something that um, 
is a little different. So I went over in here how you have your base plus count times in the base plus count times increment. Well, the way that Ida shows that for local variables or for arguments, they have to have the EDP in there, EDP plus var 20. If this was direct access to just var 20, it would be EDP plus var 20. Since it's doing an array access, it has to, Ida has to show it in this format. It's just, that's what it does. So it puts the var 20 all the way at the end, even though that is really the base. So that's just something to, to be aware of, that when you're doing a variable that's off of EBP, a local variable, uh, it's going to show up in the syntax. But that is your array access, where you have your ECX or your, your index times four, which is the size of the, um, the size of the data type in the array. This is your integer access. So what is what is this doing? We're grabbing i plus one times what? previous value. So what var 20 is going to be, so another way to write this, let me bring this up. So e, EBP plus var 20 is your actual base, and then plus EC, ECX times 4 is going to be your index. Um, and your uh, size of the data type within the array. Um, var 20 Where is that getting written? Oh, so, so the way that the way that Ida, my apologies, I forgot about this. The way that Ida is interpreting this is that int array is um, is only uh, four. Let's see if I'm interpreting this right. Okay, yeah, so var 20 is actually going to refer to the next value in the array. So what we're doing here is it's multiplying the, the next value in the array or Right, the bar 20, the position, thank you, in the array, uh, or rather the value with the position in the array, um, and then, yeah, yeah, and then comparing that with the array value, and if it matches, then you, or rather if it doesn't match, then you get boom. If it does match, then it does the the jump down to this increment 
i into adx plus long adx back into i and jumps around and checks if i is uh, if we've reached the end of our sequence. So what you end up getting, somebody want to uh, somebody want to tell me what the the answer is to phase two? One. What comes next? Two. Two. What comes next? Six. Six. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Seven. There you go. And that's the answer to phase two. So what I'll do is, oh, I should already have that open somewhere. Or not. I guess I closed it. So I'll open my answers.txt and I'll add in here one, two, um, six, twenty-four, one twenty, seven twenty. Enter. Make sure to have that new line in there. And I will save over here and I can go on to the next one. And it's not password. But you always want to try that just in case. So does anybody have any questions on phase two? Sure. Okay. So what's happening here, and we'll go from the beginning. So the int array is being loaded to EAX. So the LEA, load effective address, that just means get the, the address where that is. Yeah, and that's being pushed onto the stack along with R0, the actual pointer for R0 is being pushed. So we go into here and into array. Yeah. And what we have is So what you have right now in, in the get six numbers, that int array is a value that is the value of the memory address for right there on the stack, where, where that is on the stack locally here. And what ends up happening is when we do So this is moving that value into ECX. I'm taking a look at this one because it's going to add four and, and it'll make more sense here. That value, that memory location, and it's adding four to it. And what that does is, so it, you know what's going to make a lot more sense is if I Try to draw this. So we have our. Everybody can, okay, let me let me make this a little bigger. There we go. So let's say we have our stack here, and unlike Zeno, um, I I put the low addresses up here. And the I down here. Here's why I do this. Every single tool that you will use that I have ever seen shows you memory like this. 
So Zeno's great, Zeno's brilliant. I disagree with him showing people doing it the other way. That's all. So if we take a look at the memory like this, what we have is your stack where you're getting your the, 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 I'll just do a bunch of lines here. So, so let's assume that right here is your, um, what did I call it? Int, int underscore array. And I'll just do R. Um, and here then is your, cause, cause it's your, here we go. EBP, this here says that interarray is EBP minus 1CH and var 20 is EBP minus 20H. That's what this syntax means here. So that means that var 20 is actually above in the um, address space from interarray. So, where is paint? Yeah. So this is your var underscore. To zero. So what um, ends up happening is that var 20 points there. So if you take a look at var 20 plus 4, that's your first value of int array. Var 20 plus 8 is your second value in your int array. So that is by making var 20 first point to Basically, the memory space before interarray starts. That means that var 20 plus 1 is going to be, or plus 4 rather, um, is going to be your first value in interarray, second value, and third value. And that's how it makes reference to the quote unquote previous value in interarray. It just starts off pointing um, basically an offset behind. In memory space. Does that help? Yes. <laughs> Corey, I'm assuming the blasphemy was for me saying look at memory from low to high going down. <laughs> yes, yes, there was. Okay. Cool. So that is phase two. Um, any other questions before we, we move on to phase three? No. OK. Cool. So I said, let's, uh, oh yeah, let's do some lecture time. No, wrong one. There we go.